Coco, that's how you guys sit pretty much all the whole time. Yeah, I may move around a little bit, but I'm, I'm looking at you. No, looking at the camera. Right what would you say your top note is? Yeah. Uh, how good is this kid? <sighs> I think it's difficult for people to come up with my top 10 moments because I've been playing the game for so damn long. <laughs> There's so many years. <laughs> it's, it's hard to remember. Maybe the memories for Kobe are fading, but for Laker fans, his iconic highlights will never be forgotten. There are countless moments in his 20-year career with the purple and gold, but on this special Lakers top 10, Kobe himself narrates his list in his own words. Our countdown begins looking back at the success of Kobe's early years with rare insight from a fellow Lakers superstar. You know, people ask me all the time what I will remember most about Kobe. One is when I met him when he was 18, he said that he was going to be the greatest Laker ever. Jerry West also said that to me. And, you know, first couple of years were kind of patchy, but you know, you, you saw the determination in the kid and you saw his work ethic and then, you know, Phil Jackson joined us and we were able to knock off three and it was fun. It's easy to have fun when a team dominates like the Lakers did between 2000 and 2002, winning three straight NBA championships. Getting there, however, was no easy task. Kobe Bryant's number 10 moment features his road to that third title against a bitter Western Conference rival of the Lakers for many years. The battles that we had with Sacramento, um, that, that was a really, it, it was puzzling. And still is to this day. I mean, we, we couldn't figure out how to slow them down. We couldn't figure out how to stop their quick starts. We just couldn't figure it out. I and mean, we'd say, okay, we're gonna come in focus. We're gonna be physical, play with the right energy from the opening tip. And the next thing you know, we're down 15-2. Had so much explosion, too much firepower, played the game too fast. I mean, there was nothing we could do. So we found ourselves in a hole. For yes. The Lakers now down 68 to 64. At After a back and forth battle through four quarters, Western Conference Finals, game seven on the road. This was Kobe's time to ball. take over. Bryant for three. Yes. Kobe stepping back. Typical Kobe, anytime the big moments arise, he runs for the spotlight. That's what he lives for, and uh, he just proved again that uh, he is the guy in those big moments. If anybody has any doubts about anything, he'll erase those. The Lakers and the Kings tied at 100 points. Overtime session coming up. Game seven was a game really that they lost more so than we won. You know, they missed a lot of free throws. They have just killed themselves at the foul line. Missed a lot of wide open shots. Way off that glass. But to be a championship team, you have to capitalize on those moments of weakness of your opposition. Well, Kobe Bryant with his 30th point. That was extremely exhausting. The Los Angeles Lakers winning here in Sacramento in overtime. But at the same time, I was only 23 years old, maybe 22. <laughs> so, you know, I was tired for like five minutes after the game and then I was ready to go. <laughs> this is young. Taking over the game for his team would be a theme for Brian's career. But at moment number nine, Kobe would completely take out the other team. I do recall a moment uh, the night I was being honored here at Staples. Now Kobe hit on his way. Up versus it anyway. Even with the contact early. He 
He's got 12 of the first 19 for the Lakers. I just had a lot of motivation that game. Now Kobe, deep three. Got it! Lakers lead by eight. <laughs> Ah, that young man is on a roll, boy. Dell was on the other side. I said, okay, this is my time. This is my chance to pay Dell back for not pay, you know, playing me all those minutes my first year. <laughs> so, you know, that was certainly a little bit of motivation for me. Another three. Kobe puts the Lakers up by 10, 50 to 40, and 32 points and counting for Kobe. Oh, my goodness. It took me back. Uh, it took me back to our days together of playing. Made me feel like, you know, like I was still a part of the game that night. But it also reminded me that you know I couldn't do <laughs> what I used to do anymore because I just I just was witnessing Kobe go to an even another level. Start to an MVP season for Kobe. On yes, a new career best in the ball. Kobe's at 58. Are you kidding me? This. this well, I'll tell you something. He's giving the fans their money's worth tonight. He was giving us pull-up threes. He was giving one on five and transition scoring. I mean, he was he was on the block. He was making threes. He was making everything. I don't believe it. Incredible. 95, 61. Adds right. to his career okay. best. 62 okay. for Kobe. Hey, I take it back. <laughs> he is good, but he has more than Dallas has. At the time, I did not know. It didn't didn't dawn on me that that is what took place. They better get him to standing here right now because this is the last we'll see him tonight. The young man is done. I figured he was quite hot, uh, but I, I didn't know he had, uh, outscored our, our entire team. But, you know, he didn't play again in the fourth, and I remember the discussion, what could he have after? He could have easily had 80 that night. Phil Jackson asked me to ask Kobe if he wanted to go in uh, the fourth, the beginning of the fourth quarter and try to get 70. And Kobe looked up at the scoreboard. He's, we were up by about 30. And he said, no, I'm not going to go in. Um, we don't need it tonight. I'll get it another night. And I feel like a lot of players would go back in. And Kobe looked up, saw the score, realized that we weren't going to need him anymore that night. And he said, no, I'm good. Give me a couple ice bags and started icing. Ryan comes up to me and goes, man, are you crazy? We have never seen anything like this. This will probably never, ever happen again. You need to go back in there, and uh, you might be able to get 80 points. And he said, yeah, we're up 30 tonight, though. I'll, I'll do it another time. And I, I, I just looked at him and said, you know, when the time is right, you know, there'll be a time this season where I'll do it. <laughs> and I went and I sat down. He just looked at me and he said, man, you're crazy. And that was that. And just like that, as predicted, one month later, the Lakers would need all of Kobe's points. Will the second highest scoring game in NBA history be the first on our list? Well, there's 70. Which game brought up these emotions? Moments like that become bigger than the moment itself. These are the top 10 Kobe Bryant moments in Kobe's own words. Yeah, at that point, I was just thinking to myself, OK, you got to go out and perform. <laughs> you can't stink it up tonight. a strange couple of days for Kobe Bryant last couple of games anyway Kobe has been up and down and the reason that he has been up and down is drama in Hollywood the 2003 2004 season saw a star laden Lakers team struggle to live up to expectations a year after being bounced out of the playoffs in the second round LA looked to head into this postseason with better momentum the final game of the regular season was the time for the Lakers and Kobe to do just that. You're coming down towards the end of the year. You're in Portland, a place where the Lakers never play well. I mean, the Rose Garden is their own personal hell. Here comes Portland with numbers. Miles down the right side finds Theo and Blazers by seven. Trailing throughout, Kobe was locked in a battle with Reuben Patterson, the man who famously billed himself the Kobe Stopper. Eight seconds remaining. The final game of the regular season. The Lakers looking for their 56th victory. Kobe with it, guarded by Patterson. Staying outside the arc, dribbling. Patterson keeps his feet. I had picked up my dribble, and he was squeezing me and pressuring me. Now, at that moment, it just became about finding some gap where I could elevate and get a good look at the rim. 
And if I get a good look at the rim, then it's just a matter of me knocking the shot down because I know he's not going to jump the contestant. Staying outside the arc, dribbling. Patterson keeps his feet. Kobe forces. Oh! He made it! He threw it in! What a yeah, shot! So Unbelievable shot. I'm telling you, you don't play defense any better than Ruben Patterson did. This crowd is in complete shock. Guess what? They should be. Overtime, when it looks like Brian's heroics would be wasted as Portland takes the lead. Stoudemire lays it in! One second remaining in double overtime. The Blazers lead it 104-102. That was you know, vastly more complex, um, you know, because of the time that was on the clock. One second remaining in the regular season, possibly. Out to Kobe. Theo Ratliff came out of nowhere. <laughs> came out of nowhere, and he was so close to block. I mean, he was like, I mean, a fingernail away. You know, I mean, it was that close. And when I released the ball, he actually jammed my finger. But yeah, I think he helped the shot though, because on that shot and falling away, I probably would have shot it flat. But when he came to contest it, I had to get it over him. When I had to get it over him. I had to put more arc on the ball. You know, the time out, I, you know, I told my teammates, I said, give me a good pick, and we're going home with a W. In a countdown of Kobe Bryant's top 10 moments, it's no surprise there are more buzzer beaters. Next on the list, two more heroic shots, but this time in the playoffs. Welcome to the Staples Center in Los Angeles. It's game four between the Lakers and the Phoenix Suns. Kobe Bryant and the seven-seeded Lakers leading the best of seven set. Two games to one. After failing to make the playoffs a season ago, it was clear these Lakers were vastly different from the ones that dominated the early part of the decade. However, on this day, Kobe had his team in position to take command of the series over the heavily favored Suns. Nash shooting early, knocks it down. Four for four is Steve Nash, and the Suns on a 10-0 run. Quite literally, the Lakers needed Kobe Bryant to give them everything he had. Bryant double team gets away. <laughs> a tough shot. But it seemed as if the Suns would be too much for Kobe to overcome. Down five with 12 seconds to play. Until. Swiss Parker picks up the three. And the Lakers are still alive. Again, the Lakers out of timeouts. They'd love to get it into Nash's hands, and they do. I remember taking one dribble where I kind of leaned to the left a little bit to shift the defense, just to create a little bit of room, a little bit of separation for me to then shoot the floater. One buzzer beater, however, was not enough. In overtime, Steve Nash strikes. Nash, a three. Oh. Steve Nash from downtown, and the Suns back up by three. The Lakers are out of timeouts. So he's going he's he's for the two. Inside, cross four. So still plenty of time, a one-point game. Nash coming up, they have to foul. Nash looking, tied up, reach in. It was a mighty showdown at center court between two of the greatest athletes in, in NBA history, myself and Steve Nash. Well, certainly with the height advantage here on this tip. Kobe looked at me like, listen, tip, the tip better be coming in my direction. Walking to tip it, Brian with the save. Luke winning the jump ball was the most surprising thing that happened that entire game. <laughs> Once I had control of the ball, then the rest of that part was easy for me. Um, because it was just doing things that I've done in the gym thousands of times, which was shift the defense a little bit to be able to get to my elbow spot and raise up and shoot the jumper. Bryant with the save. Oh, go shot here. Final seconds. Bryant for the win. Bang! 
fadeaway jumper, nothing but net. It was, it was what Kobe does. It was awesome. And now it's official. The Lakers take a three to one lead as Kobe Bryant at the buzzer in overtime. Four moments down, six to go, including revenge against a bitter rival. It wasn't a matter of if we can win the series. It's, it's, there, there is no other option. We have, we have to win it I don't, by any means necessary. Welcome back to Kobe Bryant's Top Ten Moments. Number six is a historic night in New York City. But the story really begins one game earlier. Well, if, if I remember correctly, uh, the game before, I think, was in Memphis, and Andrew Bynum had just gotten hurt. Kobe on the run, and look out below. Ooh, and players down. unfortunately hit his knee, and Andrew's hurt. Unbelievable. And uh, he was out for a long period of time. And now we're coming into the season after having lost to the Celtics in 08, saying, okay, this is our season to win a championship. We have been playing well, we got a team set, and now Andrew goes down. And uh, I could feel, feel the energy of the team kind of like a little deflated. I mean, I can't believe this is happening. This is messing up our chances. Bryant sensed his team was down on their luck, needing his leadership now more than ever. A challenge he contemplated the night before squaring off with the Knicks. Normally in New York, you know, I'll go out to dinner and you know, I'll see a couple of my friends or whatever. But that night before the game, I didn't go anywhere. You know, I sat in a room and uh, I thought about the game. You know, I wasn't going to be playing around. I come out here on, on the court tomorrow. I don't care who's hurt. This season, we are winning this damn championship. I don't care what happens. And uh, that was the mentality. You know, you could see it. There was no joking around before he was ready to go. And when he gets like that and then he comes out and, and gets hot, <laughs> the other team's in for a long night. Kobe gets it right back. <laughs> what a display early. You know, he had that Kobe face going, and he was hitting every every shot he has. He was hitting it, didn't matter what they did. He's got Kobe on the wing, and Kobe flying home. Then he gets the 45, and they're like, oh, yeah. Feet, take the jumper. Oh, light him up. Kobe on a spin, what a pivot. Yes! <laughs> My most favorite moment of Kobe Bryant was at the world's most famous arena. We scored 61 points against my beloved Knicks. <laughs> Bryant's 61 points did indeed set a Madison Square Garden record, and everyone seemed to know it. Everyone, that is, except for Kobe. Coming out of the timeout, Phil said, knock these two free throws down and then you'll have the record. <laughs> I just looked at him, what the hell is he talking about? But duly noted, I'll make the two free throws. <laughs> Kobe Bryant has now scored more points than any other player at Madison Square Garden. I made the two free throws and then uh, yeah, I came out of the game and he gave me a big hug or a high five or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was a special moment. Kobe's record setting performance that night did inspire the Lakers and they would eventually head back to the NBA Finals for the second year in a row. This time, motivated by their crushing loss a season ago. 2008, in the Finals, when we were in Boston, we went to the locker room, you know, and you can see how upset he was. Favorite Kobe moment was watching Kobe crying in the Boston Garden. Watching Kobe walk off the court in 2008 in uh, Boston, uh, I think that was terrific. We were a team on a mission. You know, we were pissed off. We're still pissed about what the Celtics did. And Orlando was just in the way. They were just in the way. And uh, it was collateral damage. <laughs> Brian, tough shot. That's good. <laughs> he might be out of one of those nights. Kobe would again set the tone for his team, scoring 40 in game one, along the way to his fourth championship. Coming into that series, we knew exactly what the coverages were going to be. We knew exactly what they were going to do defensively. We knew that they were going to drop cover with Dwight. And so. I knew I could get looks anytime I wanted. I could come off the screen roll and pull up and shoot anytime I wanted. And so from that standpoint, it just became a matter of executing it properly and knocking down the shots, and, uh, which is what I did. Bryant now with 40 points, most he's ever scored in a finals game. A year later, 
the Lakers kept rolling. Bryant and the team made their third straight NBA Finals, and as luck would have it, found themselves squaring off with a Boston Celtics, giving Kobe a chance to avenge 2008's haunting defeat. In his mind, the 2009 title was not enough. You know, the championship the year before, on that run, KG was hurt, he was out. And uh, I didn't want to hear, well, the we, only reason you won that championship is because KG was hurt. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted all their horses there, and I wanted us to go head to head with them and, uh, and take them down. It wasn't a matter of if we can win the series. It's, it's, there, there is no other option. We have, we have to win it I don't, by any means necessary. Come hell or high water, we're going to get this thing done. Ray Allen all over Bryant. Good defense there. You didn't shoot particularly well. Uh, That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe is banged up and messed up, and Kobe had a, one of his worst playoff games for the three quarters that I've ever seen. Well, in game seven, while I wasn't shooting the ball well at all, um, you have to look at other areas of the game, areas where you can have material impact. Right? Defensively, Celtics were a big team. They usually dominated the glass. OK, I shift my attention there. He's just playing so hard. Ray Allen, way off the mark. Another rebound for Kobe Bryant. You know, defensively. You know, in Garden Rondo, I had the ability to roll around, right? So I have to be able to roll around on Paul. Where's KG? You know, I have to be able to use my angles defensively the right way. Now on the drive, it's inside. Pretty well move, but he can't finish. And look who comes down with another rebound. It's 15th of the game. And then playmaking. You know, I still have to be able to carry the threat of the shot and open things up for my other guys. Ryan looking. Our chest. That's a three. Bang! How does this one stand out for you more than one, two, three, and four? Well, this, this is the sweetest. This one's by far the sweetest because it's against them and because it's the hardest one by far. Beating them, it felt like it validated our first championship. The pure joy and uh, sigh of relief that the entire building felt, you know, once the game was in hand. That's something that I'll just never forget. Big news is the story that Kobe has announced that this will be his final season. I mean, you know, I, I've, I've known for a while, and finally I just had to just accept the fact that I just, I, I don't want to do this <laughs> anymore. You know, it's, it's, and I'm okay with that. I think people will appreciate what he's accomplished, not only in our building, but I think even more so on the road. Those legendary accomplishments led to Kobe being honored in every arena. The reception I received was uh, was amazing. You know, very heartfelt and uh, extremely appreciative of it. They received some pretty amazing gifts. For the five championships, we've got you staying in Napa Valley at Meadow Wood. The gifts varied greatly, but they were all beautiful. This last generation literally grew up watching me play. They would reach out directly, the before games, after games, and that's when I really got a first-hand account of uh, the influence that I've had on these younger players. Here are all the guys. This. Wow, that's what's up. Dude. Personally, wrote you some stuff, man. So uh, thank you. You know, we appreciate you, big dog. Yeah, Always. Yes, sir. The coolest thing is the messages that I receive from other players. Okay? And they say, you know, thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for the lessons, for the mentality. I mean, those things are the things that honestly mean the most to me. We hadn't seen this Kobe before. So we saw a Kobe that really embraced the fans, embraced the love that he received across the NBA. Nowhere would that love be more apparent than at home. On the night of Kobe's final NBA game, which is the number four moment on the countdown. I could feel the electricity as I was pulling up to the arena. When I walked into the arena, and it felt like an NBA Finals game, the amount of cameras that were there and the amount of press that was there. I've never seen anything like this before. I saw Kareem's farewell, but Kobe's was unique. Kobe, uh, I think I may retire with you. I'm not sure, but uh, it's been great watching you, and L.A. loves you. It's a surreal moment 
to be introduced as a Laker in my final game after 20 seasons, with my favorite team being introduced by my all-time favorite player. This is not supposed to happen with a kid that grew up in Italy. <laughs> and so to have Magic introduce me at that moment in time, it's hard to really put into words how much that meant to me. We've had this man 20 years. You know, it's hard for us. You know, we're spoiled. The feeling before the game was magical, it was mystical. We had no idea what we were about to see. And at that point, I was just thinking to myself, okay, you gotta go out and perform. <laughs> you can't stink it up tonight. And it's time to play NBA basketball for the 82nd game of the year. When the game started, it was like a party almost. You could feel the excitement, and, and the fans are just waiting to see, okay, what kind of night is this gonna be? First shot, up it goes, gonna be short. And I went out and missed my first whatever it was. You know, you can feel the letdown. It was like, oh, man. And that one is a bit long. The adrenaline's really got to be pumping through Kobe right now. I remember thinking to myself, you know, this is pretty hilarious. Like, this is the last game, and everybody's watching. The world's watching. And you want to go, like, 0 for 40 or something crazy. I thought that was pretty funny. And it is what it is. But I'm going to go out there and play hard. You know, things just start clicking. Jump fake. Fade away. Good. Kobe for three. Up it goes. And down it goes. Are you kidding me? During the game, when I started going on that run, he challenged me to go for 50, and I just kind of laughed it off. The time that he said it, you're, you're sitting there kind of thinking, okay, well, that, that's, that seems a little bit far-fetched. You were kind of just hoping that he got to 30. One minute coming up to play. Kobe with the ball, and the Lakers down four. My legs were tired, but I knew I needed to muscle through that. And through my years of experience, uh, I knew how to shoot with my arms in those situations. So that's what I tried to do. Bryant. When I released the ball, I actually thought the, the shot was short. It's a one-point game! So when it went in, I was actually fairly surprised. <laughs> Kobe has 56 points! He's so tired, he can barely pick his feet up. That was a big shot. That was a shot that really got us over that hump there. Three-pointer by Shelvin Mack. No good. Rebound, D'Angelo Russell. Coming down the stretch, I'll never forget this. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great if the game was on the line and Kobe Bryant had the ball? And I'll never forget saying the line, look who has the ball. And look who has the ball! I knew we were gonna come down and run a top screen roll. At that point, it just became about what kind of coverage were we gonna see. I let Julius Randle know when the screen comes and the defense does this, I need you to do this. Kobe dribbling left, around a pick from Randle. You know, my legs were tired, but you know, I said, listen, this is, this is the shot. Just measure the shot, use your legs, and knock it down. And, uh, and that's what I did. Pulls up, two-pointer, go! It was like a culmination of all of Kobe's great moments rolled into one. If I wasn't sitting here, I wouldn't believe it. When I stepped up to the free throw line there, I was extremely conscious. Bryant is 8 for 10 from the line. But does he have enough legs to get free throws? We'll see. <laughs> you got 58 points. You, know, you can't stop at 59. <laughs> First free throw by Kobe. Good. So at that point, it just became, all right, just make two free throws. These are your last two free throws. I can't count how many free throws I've shot throughout my entire career. So all I have to do at this point is make two more. Kobe's second free throw good. He has 60. Kobe Ryan. I knew uh, that a lot of my former teammates were gonna come. I wasn't expecting them all to be out there on the court at the end, but that was such a beautiful moment. I had a chance to see them and you know, some of the guys I haven't seen in a very, very long time. And, um, you know, we share special bonds. He did it again. I got chills thinking about it. I don't think it's not anything that he can do to top this game. I'm just happy I was here to see it. I well, challenged him to 50, he got 60. And the crazy thing, ever since first met him at 18 years old, he was always like that. Storybook ending. Hell of a career. It's hard to believe that it happened this way. It really is. Like, I'm still in shock about it. And the outpouring of support all night long and my former teammates and the fans and my family. And it's unbelievable. <laughs> It 
in 2013, I mean, we were you know, five games out of the playoffs going into the All-Star break, you know what I mean? So I had to I had to really, really motor through that. I mean, I was 34, 35 maybe. So I wasn't, uh, I didn't have these young, fresh legs, you know. So I really had to push it to get us into the playoffs and every game mattered. And so I had to do everything I possibly could to win every single game in that Toronto game. Yeah, that, that game was, that game was over. It was dead in the water. This is something that's truly unacceptable. Kobe dribbling. Brock is in issue. Three, two, one. Kobe, a three-pointer. It's good at the buzzer. Kobe has made it a two-point game. With the Raptors, I mean, I just think it's just bad luck. I mean, it just, it just so happened when I played the Raptors that the fall on games where my legs were there and physically I was there and my shot was there. I mean, it just so happened to be every time we faced them. Lakers down, in trouble, quickly. Bryant, three from the corner. Yes! Kobe! I can't explain why or how that happens. It's just, that's just... That's just what happened. He gets it into Kobe. Kobe, good little fake. Three to tie! Three to tie! We're tied to Kobe's legendary heroics would continue in overtime. Everybody on their feet at Staples Center. 15 seconds to go. Gray comes out to double. Kobe around him. Kobe down the middle. Dunks it home! Kobe Bryant! Are you kidding me? Lakers 117! Raptors 115! And Kobe Bryant, 41 brilliant points! I was fortunate enough to watch him play for most of my life, and uh, his passion for the game, you know, it's really rare in players, and only a few have ever possessed that. And I think that's what allowed him to play so many years to be so successful. Just So for me, I'll remember most just his intensity every night and just wanting to kill his opponent. With a matchup against Klay Thompson's Golden State Warriors, nothing could stop him from helping his team chase the playoffs, or so it seemed. Colby, three. Kobe one on one, isolated for the tie. He's got it. It's 107 all. And then, in an instant, everything changed. Golden State always, from that position, plays me left. And I use the jab fake that I use all the time. And I took off to go left. And I took off. It just, just snapped. It just went. And he's going to stay down there for a bit. Time to massage that left ankle a little bit. I knew right away it was the Achilles. I knew it was torn. I was hoping for some kind of uh, magical healing power where I could reattach the Achilles by rubbing it. <laughs> At that point, you gotta try anything, you know, try everything. But I knew it happened, and you know, and, you know, I got up. I was just trying to walk and trying to find a way to to manage it for a few more minutes. He came over and he said, "What's it feel like when?" you uh, tear your Achilles tendon. And I said, did it feel like somebody kicked you in the back of your leg? And as soon as I said that, um, he just had this look on his face like bingo. There are a lot of moments in sports um, where um, the outside world views them and has a reaction to it, uh, an inspirational reaction to it. Whereas us as the athletes simply see what the moment is right in front of us. And for me, the moment was like, it was very black and white. And can I figure out how to walk through this or play through this for these last few minutes of this game? And he is hurting, but the Lakers down by two and they want him and need him at the free throw line. I tried to figure out, is there a way that I could play through it? And I'm just going to shoot the free throws. I'm going to put all the pressure on my right leg and shoot these free throws because I do not want them selecting who is who's going to shoot the free throw on our team and cost us a couple points. He is literally on his last leg right now. He can barely make it to the free throw line. It's my responsibility to do this. And so that's what I was thinking. Got it. I went out, shot the free throws, and then 
Walking back, I could feel the tendon start rolling up higher and higher, and I was like, you know, it's probably not a good idea for me to continue. I told the official that after the second free throw, we were going to foul uh, to stop the game so we could get him out. And he walked on his own power to the, to the locker room. Don't ever question the heart, the emotion, the grit, the tenacity of that guy. That's the beauty of sports, when you can have moments like that that become bigger than the moment itself and uh, inspire other people. I mean, that's what makes sports great. You've had tons of personal and professional challenges in your career. Is this at the top of the list? Yeah, you know, um, it's fueling me. It's fueling me. I can feel it already. <laughs> I can feel it already. It's just, you know, players at this stage of their career, you know, they pop Achilles and, you know, the pundits say they never come back the same. So I can hear it already. And it's, it's pissing me off right now. <laughs> just thinking about it, so. I was really tired, man. Just tired in the locker room, upset and dejected and thinking about this mountain, man, to overcome. I mean, this is a long process, you know. I wasn't sure I could do it. You know, your kids walk in and you're like, you know, I got to set an example. <laughs> you know, daddy's going to be fine. I'm going to do it. You know, work hard and just go from there. Only two moments to go on the countdown. Which one is Shaq referencing? After that game, I think that's when I said he's the best player ever. And what was crucial to the future generations? The most important thing, uh, I think, for players that come after me is to understand that things, these things are possible, you know? Like, you don't want to ever limit your imagination or limit what's possible because people may think you're crazy, right? But if us as athletes don't think that it's possible to do these things, how in the world can we inspire people? It was that sustained six to eight weeks that we played top-notch basketball in playoffs that will remain as fondest memories. At number two of Kobe Bryant's top 10 moments, he's a game that occurred during one of those stretches. Seeking his first championship in the 2000 NBA Finals, Bryant was eager to display his clutch potential in game four. But the story really begins two games earlier, with the Lakers in control, until one unfortunate turn. Looks like he sprained his ankle when Kobe came down. He's on the floor. And he's writhing in pain. That's bad news for the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers would win and take a two games to nothing lead. Kobe's status for the rest of the series, however, was now very much in doubt. I really wanted to play, and I remember Phil <laughs> coming up to me saying, nah, I just sit this one out. Maybe good for us to lose one. <laughs> I just, I just remember looking at him and saying, man, this guy's crazy, man. This guy is crazy. Ryan Shaw, his three is the game's last shot. And that's it. Our next day in practice, working with Gary Beatty. Gary Beatty was doing some modalities on my ankle, and we got one really loud pop. I mean, it was really, really loud. It was, I mean, it was a big pop. And he just looked at me and he said, well, either that's a good thing or a bad thing. Either that pop means you're going to be able to play, you're going to be able to move around, or that means I've just really broken your ankle and you're done. <laughs> so walk around, tell me how you feel. <laughs> and I started walking and it felt good. And I started jogging and it felt better. The swelling was still there. It was still really big, but the pain wasn't there as much. It took me a little while to get, get going, get used to it. But once I got used to it, it was back to business as usual. I, I think as the game goes on, if Kobe can get his ankle to loosen up, it appears already he's starting to feel much better about it than he did the first couple minutes, Bob. I've had sprained ankles in middle school and high school. I mean, I've had ankles really, really swollen. I played through them. So I, and I played through pain before. So it, was, it, it wasn't a matter of if I can do that. Kobe with a great feed to O'Neal. It was just a matter of playing well at, at the highest level against top-level players. Shaw to trigger it in. They look for Shaq. He makes the catch. He throws up the hook. And we are going to overtime. 
If Indiana won the game, they could tie it. The refs would give me a hard time, and I fouled out. Shaw grabs the rebound. That's a loose ball foul on Shaq. That'll be number six. What a big play. Kobe looked at me, and he didn't have a worry in the world. He said, I got you, big fella, and I'm going to take over. Now you know that Kobe's going to take over the game. Kobe is going to try to attack. I also knew they weren't double teaming me. I mean, I, you know, I was 21 years old. I don't think the Pacers really had any idea of the confidence or the ambition that was inside of me. If they knew, they would have blitzed me. Kobe is going to go to work again. Here he is over Jackson. How good is this kid? Four seconds. Mark Jackson. Reggie off the screen for three. The Lakers have a 3-1 lead. When Shaq fouled out, my mind state was, you know, this game just became an awful, awful lot more interesting than it was. And uh, it was just fun for me. You know, I laughed about it. Just went out and played relaxed as if I was in the backyard. What's crazy about that, if you watch the highlights, was Shaq after that game hugging Kobe on the court, talking to him in his ear. Like, Shaq knew that that was the moment that was going to get him the championship. Well, that's probably, you know, my favorite moment because he's the type of kid that whenever he says he's going to do something, nine out of ten times he does it. The number one moment on the countdown started out as a routine regular season game with an underwhelming start. I would love to be in the Laker locker room at halftime just to hear the verbiage from Coach Phil Jackson. We as a team, we weren't really playing that well. And Kobe has a tendency of, all right, we're going to play team ball. But if it starts going in a different direction, I'm going to take over. Lakers are down 14. They've got to win the first five. And if they do that, I, I think they'll win this game. So the halftime, I just said, I'm going to come out here in the third quarter, and I'm going to go after them. And I'm not going to stop. And uh, that's exactly what I did. Go ahead, guys. Get on my back. We'll see what we can do. 35 for Kobe. Then all of a sudden, something ridiculously special starts to happen. And Kobe Bryant starts to have the game of his life. Kobe again, yes, sir! And the crowd's starting to sense it, too, as he builds up to 47 now. I felt like I was having a special night when Lamar kept reminding me that I was having a special night, and every time out, <laughs> he'd, he'd come to me and say, you can't get 50. Knocked away by Kobe. Great hustle by Kobe. He's going to score. And the next time I go, he just looks at me and goes, you can't get 60. <laughs> Kobe goes straight to the dribble. In the lane, lane, lane. Kobe Bryant, he's got 61 points. And then by the last time he says, well, go on and get 80 then. <laughs> For three again, yes! <laughs> well, there's 70. That wasn't something that was out of the realm of possibility in my mind uh, because of the amount of work that I put in. I mean, that summer, I really, I put a lot of time in the gym. I put a lot of time on the track. And I could run all day and run at a high speed all day long. And I'd taken so many shots. I mean, I, my shot felt sharp. Kobe's got the Laker record. <laughs> 70. So it's like if I, my foot stays on the gas, there could be games where I do have 80 points. Being out on the floor with him, like I knew he was hot, and I would like I would look up and see like, dang, was, that scoreboard looks broken. That's 75. Because it's like there's never 75 next to somebody's name. The most important thing uh, I think for players that come after me is you don't want to ever limit your imagination because people may think you're crazy, but if us as athletes don't think that it's possible to do these things, how in the world can we inspire people? Crowd is going nuts. Kobe all the way. Kobe put it up. Foul. Two coming to get to 80 and 81. This entire crowd on its feet. Going for 80. It 
It was just one of the greatest basketball players of all time, uh, just rising to the occasion and giving us a performance that we'll never forget. He sacrificed everything else for his commitment to the game. I, I take my hat off to him. Uh, you don't see that type of professional attitude and total commitment. Yeah, I just remember once I was once I was leaving the game, just kind of feeling the uh, the energy from the building and kind of the crescendo of cheers. Listen to this crowd for number eight, Kobe Bryant. I mean, I think it probably sank, sank in for me after the game, and B. Shaw just came up to me, just looked at me and said, man, you are crazy. <laughs> he said, you told me when the time comes, you'll be able to do it, and I thought you lost your mind, and man, I can't say that you're that crazy anymore. <laughs>